Hi, welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering eczema in children. We're going to be covering a couple of things, including what eczema is, causes of childhood eczema, signs and symptoms of eczema, including important questions you need to ask mum and dad when you're trying to diagnose eczema, treatment options and things that you can do at home in order to help your child if you're a mum or a dad, and finally, red flag features, which are things that you don't want to miss. I've also included some really useful links and resources in the description box of the video, which would encourage you to check out for more information. So what is eczema? Well, eczema is a very common skin condition affecting at least one in every five children. Eczema makes the skin very itchy, red, dry, and cracked. It can be quite painful and distressing for your child, and there's a risk that the dry, cracked skin can become infected. The term which is often used to describe eczema, and which you may have heard quite a lot, is atopic eczema. An atopy is simply a word used to describe a problem with the immune system that makes a person more likely to develop allergic diseases such as asthma, eczema, or hay fever. So you often find that children who've got asthma also commonly have eczema or hay fever in addition to this. So what are the causes of eczema? Well, genetic factors are an important cause of eczema, particularly those that lead to poor skin barrier function. Eczema can be triggered or worsened by factors that cause increased dryness of the skin, and that includes things such as soaps, shampoos, and even central heating being put on in homes. So what are the signs and symptoms of eczema? Well, eczema can affect any area of the skin and the severity of symptoms and areas affected can vary depending on your child's age. In infants, so that's children between one and three years old, eczema primarily involves the face, the scalp, and the extensor surfaces of the limbs, whereas the nappy area is usually spared. In children, eczema is often localised to the flexures of limbs, so these are things like the inner creases of the arms and the backs of your child's knees. However, it's important to know that in children of Asian, Black Caribbean and Black African ethnic groups, atopic eczema can affect the extensor surfaces rather than the flexures, and discoid or follicular patterns may be more common, so it's important to be aware of this. Itching is the most common significant symptom of eczema, and scratching often makes it worse. The itching is often bad enough to disturb sleep and sometimes the scratching can be so severe that the areas of the skin start to bleed. They may also become infected so that the skin oozes and crusts and we're going to cover infected eczema at the end of the video. So please make sure you stick around for this because that's something you really don't want to miss. If inadequately treated, patches of eczema may become thickened, which is known as lichenification as well as discolored. So how do you diagnose eczema? Well, diagnosis in a child is typically a clinical diagnosis, meaning that the doctor or healthcare professional will look and assess at the child's skin, they'll document or map the affected areas, and they'll come up with a diagnosis in the clinic. If you're a health professional, then you might want to ask mum or dad about the following things when you take a history. You want to ask them about the presence of itching, and that's important because the diagnosis is unlikely to be eczema if there's no itch. You want to ask about the pattern, the time of onset, and the natural history of the rash. Atopic eczema usually starts in infancy and it's episodic in nature. You want to ask the parents about a family or personal history of atopy. Things like allergic rhinitis and asthma are often associated with eczema. You also want to ask them about any treatments they've tried and the response to the treatments, as well as possible trigger factors. These are things such as soaps or detergents, and you might find the child has started to use a new soap recently, which has caused a flare-up of the eczema. You can also ask about food, certain fabrics of clothes, as well as pets or pollen, which can all be triggers for the eczema. Once you've taken the history, you then want to move on and do an examination. And to do this, examine all areas of the affected skin and ask about itching. There are four main categories used to define the severity of eczema. And this is really important because the severity of eczema really guides the treatment. The first is clear, and that's if there's no evidence of active eczema. The next is mild, and that's if there's areas of dry skin and infrequent itching. The next is moderate, and that's if there are areas of dry skin with frequent itching and redness. And the final one is severe, and that's if there's widespread areas of dry skin, incessant itching and redness. 
So let's move on and talk about the treatment of eczema. Well, treatment really varies depending on whether it's clear, mild, moderate, severe, or infected. In this video, I'm mainly going to cover two really important treatment options for eczema, which are emollients and topical corticosteroids. And that's if your child is presenting to the GP or family medicine doctor. There's lots of other options for treatment, but this video is mainly focused on those two really important forms of management. So the first thing that every eczema patient should have is an emollient, which are needed to soften and moisturize the skin. And these are things such as Diprobase or Zero Base, and there's lots of different moisturizing emollients out there for you to choose from. These should be applied several times every day to help the outer layer of skin to function better as a barrier to the environment. The drier the skin, the more frequently the moisturiser should be applied. I often get questions on what's the best emollient moisturiser to use, and the answer is the best one to use is the greasiest one that you're all prepared to apply to your child's skin. And I've included a link to the patient information website, which contains lots of more specific information on emollients at the very end of this video in the description box. So please go check that out. The next and or second most important form of treatment is steroid creams, and these can help to reduce inflammation, and they'll usually improve the redness and itching of Activate Topic Eczema. They come in different strengths and the doctor or specialist nurse will advise which types need to be used, where and for how long. For example, for eczema on the face, the neck, under the armpits or in the groin where the skin is slightly thinner, things such as 1% hydrocortisone ointment is useful and that's a mild steroid cream and can be used for up to 14 days. Whereas where the skin's a bit thicker, so for example on the torso or the back, this can be treated with a slightly stronger corticosteroid, such as clebetasone ointment. But again, it will be down to the recommendations and guidance of the health professionals. There's also special bath creams which add moisture to the skin, which should be used instead of bubble bath or soap. So try to avoid off-the-shelf bubble baths or soaps. And you can always speak to your local pharmacist who can give you more information on these bath moisturizers. Sometimes more intensive treatment is needed in more severe cases of eczema, and this can include things such as wet wraps, which involve application of emollient and steroid cream covered with layers of wet wrap clothing. The aim of the wet wraps is to increase the moisture in your child's skin and calm down the inflammation. Stronger medicines are also available, most commonly medicines to dampen down the immune system are used, but these are only prescribed by specialist doctors. There's no specific cure for eczema, but the symptoms can be managed well if appropriate treatment is used and aggravating factors are avoided, and that's the really important thing to notice. So if you've noticed that your child has got trigger factors such as food, pollen, allergens, or pets, then try and make sure they avoid those. So what can you be doing at home? Well, you can moisturize your child's skin as often as possible, ideally at least two to three times each day. The most greasy, non-perfume moisturizer tolerated is best. And this is the most important part of the skincare. You can also wash with a moisturizer instead of a soap, which is known as a soap substitute, and avoid things like we already discussed, such as bubble baths, shower gels, and detergents. Make sure you treat your child's eczema early. The more severe it becomes, the more difficult it is to control. Try and tell your child if they're old enough to, to avoid the temptation to scratch the eczema. It might relieve the itch briefly, but it will make the skin itchier in the long term. For this reason, little mittens in babies can be helpful when they're sleeping, as well as keeping your child's fingernails short. It's important to also keep your child cool because overheating can make the eczema itch more. It's also important to wash clothes with a non-biological washing powder and use a double rinse cycle to remove detergent residues from the clothing. In terms of red flag features, so things you don't want to miss or maybe seek more specialist advice for, well, if the eczema is weeping, crusted, or there are pustules, if the child has got fever, then you should suspect a secondary bacterial infection. And they might need antibiotics and a specialist review if they're particularly unwell. Similarly, if there's treatment failure of moderate eczema, widespread dry skin or severe impact on psychosocial factors such as going to school or it's bothering them with their activities of daily living, again, specialist input should be considered. I hope you found the video useful, informative and helpful. I've included loads of links in the description box beneath this video, including more information on eczema, more information on treatment, as well as a video on how to apply topical creams to the skin. Thanks once again for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time. Bye.